to me to get it out the mud means that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get you know to the destination um and you're you know you're working with limited resources and for the most part um for me i'm a i'm a true testament of getting out the mud cam kirk most people know me as a photographer but i feel like i've evolved into just a creative entrepreneur originally i'm from pg county maryland so born and raised there spent the first 18 years of my life maryland dc area um, decided to move to Atlanta, um, pursue, you know, Morehouse College, freshman at college. Wanted to get a change of scenery, wanted to just experience something different, but at the same time, wanted to be around my people still. So PG County is known as like one of the top places for just black success and black wealth. Um, and, and the only other place bigger than that and better than that was Atlanta. Growing up in Maryland to me, it's just a completely different lifestyle. Like most of my friends in Maryland, you have kids, you get married, you got real jobs, right? Some of them work for the government. Um, it just, it's like, I wouldn't wanna say it's more responsible than Atlanta, but it just gives off that more mature vibe. So I think just growing up seeing, you know, my parents go to work every day my friends had internships or jobs when they were 16 and everyone went to work. It really just taught me um, work ethic and value, you know, work values. And, you know, you do what you got to do to put food on your, your table, you know what I mean? So I think coming to Atlanta, that's like the biggest change. But Maryland really just taught me that, like, you take care of responsibilities and you do what you got to do. And it's more about... Uh, it's more about being like stable than I think it is like clout chasing. Like people don't judge you for having a job. Originally, I saw myself doing one of the core jobs. I wanted to be a doctor. Like that's the whole point of me coming to Atlanta. I thought I was gonna be a doctor. So you tell me now I'll be an entrepreneur. It goes so far against like the first 18 years of my life is kind of crazy. Um, one, I, I've never been outgoing, outspoken. I've always been, you know, quietest one in the room, shy, reserved. I'm not a risk taker. You know, I've, I've never smoked weed a day in my life. Like I didn't see my first weed till I was in Atlanta. Like I've never been that type of person that was like that, uh, you know, like that risk taker. I've never been that. So for me to do what I do now, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny uh, to be honest. So I never wanted to really do nothing non-traditional, but I did have certain things that where it did make sense. Like I've always wanted to be in control of my own destiny. I think that that's what motivates me more than anything. I hate rules. I hate being told what I can and can't do. I hate restrictions. I hate being put in a box. Um, I love change. I love being able to create change or, or cause change. So I think those things, it's kind of what enticed me about a non-traditional way of life. So my interest in photography honestly didn't come about until about 20, probably after college when I would say my interest and in it came about. But my dad put a camera in my hand since a kid, since a baby. My dad's a photographer, he's been a photographer for years. So every house from the apartments we had to house we lived in, my dad has always had a photo studio somewhere in that house. Um, so all of our family portraits, every milestone and your, your school, you know, graduating from middle school to high school, you know, my dad took those photos of us. Uh, graduation, the yearbook, sports. When I played basketball, I would come home and take my sports photo, you know what I mean, my uniform. So it's always been around me. My dad, you know, forced us to do that. If we wanted to make allowance, you wanted to have $50, well, you gotta come with me on this wedding that we're shooting and you gotta assist. You know what I mean? You gotta carry the bags. You gotta load up the tripod. You gotta push the button on the camera. Like, so it's kind of been around me, but I tell my dad and I tell everybody, my, there's like photography. When you think about the camera work, you think about photography. That's like a very broad topic. So you, it's like being a doctor, but then you got sports medicine, heart surgeon, neurosurgeon, psychiatrist, like you got all types of fields. So the only photography I saw my dad do was very like corporate-y, you know, Marine Corps ball, 
maybe at a prom, a wedding, you know, you're wearing your suit, you're shaking hands, Mr. and Mrs. It's very formal and I didn't really see the creativity in it, so it didn't, it didn't move me. I wasn't really excited about it. Um, so the idea of photography and understanding that there's more layers to it, there's more opportunities in it, and I can actually connect photography with my passion for culture, that came like later down the line, like 2012, Atlanta introduced me to that side of it. And that's what actually got me like into photography and understanding for real that I had a talent. And at 16, my first job, as soon as I turned 16, I was like, I gotta get a job. I got a job at DTLR at 16. So I was working in like the coolest shoe store. So I, again, I was quiet in high school, but I had the coolest job. No one else was working at the sneaker store but me. Um, so I would put people on discounts, have people from my school pull up. So I was like cool in a way, but I was also just very reserved, very to myself. As a kid growing up, I was always into music and I was always into fashion. I was always into sports. So pretty much the core elements of culture, I was always into. Um, so, but for me, I was just very, very, very shy, very quiet. Um, so I was a kid in school. I wasn't a kid in school that you had to be scared of. Let me go that far. I wasn't that quiet. Whereas like you had to be nervous about what I was going to do. But I was a kid that always had the latest and greatest on. Was wearing everything that the coolest kid in school had on, if not more than what they had on. Uh, I knew everything that was going on on campus. I was in the we, I was in the know. I knew who was dating who, who was messing with who, all that in high school. I knew everything, and I still could tell you everything about sports, new Lil Wayne album, Ti's album. Like I was a big music head. Uh, I just was very quiet, but I've always been inspired and motivated by that. I mean, in high school, I got reintroduced to Nas. Um, went back, got the whole catalog. I was heavily on Illmatic. So I was like, like I was always, I'm always really big on just like knowing where we came from. First kind of known artist that really gave me an opportunity, really took me under his wing was Young Scooter back in 2012. But when I really think about prior to him, I had had a couple of one-off sessions with uh, Jeezy, Schoolboy Q, Estelle, uh, Future, um, and even this artist in New York named Sky Zoo. So I had a number of run-ins where a few people would give me an opportunity, um, but no opportunity was greater or bigger for me than the opportunity to work with Young Scooter. My sister, Ebony Ward, manages Future, Gun to Flow Millie now, um, was kind of doing a lot of great things with Future's Camp and working with Future and just building out the label, the talent. And uh, originally she wanted me to become Future's cameraman day to day. And um, so she gave me some opportunities to work with Future early on. And I'm gonna just be honest, I just wasn't ready. Like, I wasn't ready for that life. Like, Future exposed me, I ain't gonna lie. Like, the lifestyle of just being on the road, Miami, you know, the protocols right after the club, run to the car, like all that was just a little too fast paced for me. I wasn't really ready for it. So. She gave me a few opportunities and I love her to death for it. Um, but they decided at that time, like, you know, go work with Scooter. Like, you know, I had to grind it out a little bit more. I had to learn the ropes a little bit more, um, which I'm so thankful for. This is like Columbia just started to come out in Atlanta. So it's still a really a locally trending song. It isn't really as big as it was. Like I think the first show I went to Scooter where he might've got $1,500, right? So you think about that. 2011, 2012, he was getting 1500. By the time I stopped working with him or the day that, my last day working with him when he got locked up, he got booked for $35,000. You know, I was the guy that started his SoundCloud account. I was making the, the uh, covers to his album, his albums and graphic designing, you know what I mean? I was creating the flyers, the promo videos. I was kind of doing everything that they needed me to do. I also was, acting as you know part of his publicist like I was setting up premieres with Complex magazine and getting his stuff played here placed here connected dots got him connected with Wiz Khalifa they actually did a song together so like I was just really trying to do whatever it took to really help out because I just believed in him I, I to this day I still believe 
it wouldn't be this Atlanta scene that we're used to seeing right now if it wasn't for Scooter. If you look at my early work, like 2012, all the way through about 2015, 2016, a lot of the work you see are like candid moments. It's not photo shoots, it's like candid. It's like the artist never looking at you. It's, stay, it's on a concert, it's backstage, it's all of these different vibes, then recording in the studio and all that. And that's kind of where I got known to being like the eye of Atlanta. Cause I was like giving you an inside perspective of what it was like to be in the studio with a young thug, be in the studio with a future, um, be at a concert that uh, maybe Travis Scott was throwing or something like that. I was giving you more of that really personal connection. I'm, I'm most proud of a lot of the work I did with Gucci Man because he never posed for a single one of those pictures I took of him that I really built a legacy and brand off of. He never posed for a single one of them. He never even knew I was taking them. Um, it was just that style of just like being a fly on the wall and just really giving an audience or a world a look into what it's like to be around these guys on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I, got, I kinda outgrew that. I was doing that for about four years and I felt like I was always getting the short end of the stick when it came to like the overall growth of my career. I was a photographer they called when it was one in the morning. Yo, pull up to the studio right quick. Yo, pull up right here. Yo, I got this right quick. There's no money involved. There's no business involved. There's no managers involved. It's a direct connection with the artist. Something that I don't take for granted. But as I'm trying to grow who I am and my brand, um, being the one that just gets the the BTS shot or just the shot in the studio, but never the album cover, um, never the magazine cover, never the certain looks was kind of getting to me. Um, but I knew at that point, if I want to switch things up, I got to get them to look at me differently. I knew it may not start with the artists I was with at that time. They were probably a little too big for that. Um, so I started younger, I went to the next gen. So the first artist that really gave me my opportunity to show creativity, to show a vision, was Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty was the first artist that really, like, just blind, blind trust. But he had been a fan of my work from the Scooter, the Gucci days, the Thug Metros, that, like, he grew up in that era that we were doing. So he had been a fan of my work, and his dad's a photographer, so he respects the craft of photography. So. He was just excited to work with me. Um, and I was excited to work with him when we sat down and I got to know his story and hear him out. I was just really like a fan of just his image and the way he carried himself. And I saw a fashion icon. I saw somebody that's gonna be around for a long time just off the imagery. And I felt like he would be a great person to really like experiment with and show my creativity. My favorite photo and one of my most iconic photos to date is our first photo shoot together, um, which is Yachty standing on this cliff and it's nothing but blue skies behind him. And um, people always ask me, are the, are the clouds photoshopped? I'm like, I didn't know how to do Photoshop at that time. I'm still learning, um, to be honest. But uh, during that time, it just was a magical moment. And um, none of that would be happening. None of these photos would mean anything, to be honest if the artists didn't live up to the hype and live up to what I thought they could be and what I believed they would be. So a lot of my work is also a testament to just my eye for talent and my vision for it. If you look at like my, some of my most iconic work, you're never gonna see Metro with his chains. I wasn't really around him when, as, as closely when that was happening. I was around him in the dorm room. When I met 21 Savage, one of my most famous photos of 21 and Metro, they both have on Hanes white tees, sitting on an old motorbike that it was Uzi's at the time. That wasn't, that wasn't the selling out stadiums and shows 21 Savage. Same applies to Thug, same applies to Rich Homie Quan. I did Rich Homie Quan's first video to ever put him on World Star Hip Hop. Same applies to even the Gucci that most of my iconic work is with. It's not the same Gucci man. Um, so it was, it was just like my eye for talent and my ability to connect with people that I believed in really took my work to the next level. So yesterday's tomorrow is our premier event underneath the Cam Kirk Foundation. It's a conference event, community conference event, um, rooted in just like the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. And it's really rooted in just service and providing a service.
community service to your neighborhood, your city, and specifically Atlanta. Uh, my biggest key to success is, it's really a formula, I think, which is the key to success is it starts per, starts off first with yourself is understanding what you're good at you know understanding what you do better than anybody else in the world anybody other anybody else that you've ever met people in your family there's always something that you're good at you might be good at math you might be good at writing you might be good at speaking singing whatever it's figuring out what's that one thing that just naturally you are better than a lot of people and I think that's your God-given talent and it can be a number of different ways right I think the next part of that formula is figuring out what you're actually passionate about sometimes those aren't the same things but it's important to understand what you're passionate about what's one thing you would do the rest of your life whether you were paid or not if money was never an object if you could wake up and do this every day it puts a smile on your heart it warms your heart you're into it you're excited you love it I don't care if that's video games, I don't care if it's singing, I don't care if it's running, jogging, riding your bike. What's the one thing that you're super passionate about? And then you try to find ways to marry that. You look for the intersection of what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and look for the marriage between the two. Once you figure out those two things, the next thing you figure out is, how can I solve a world problem with these things? How do these two things come together and solve an issue within my neighborhood, within my community, within the world. If you can find those two things and then figure out what that problem is solved, that why, why it's necessary, why anybody gives a fuck about it, you got a formula to success. So I always knew when it's all said and done, I wanted a, a staple, I wanted a place in the city that my name just lives on, is planted at. Um, so the idea of Cam Kirk Studios was something I was always going to do. I was always going to take this digital online following and find a way to make it physical, a physical location, a physical space. Um, and just the idea behind it has just evolved over time as, it's, as the reception has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. So now we do a little bit of everything here. Um, but that was the vision. You know, the same as when I started Collector Gallery, which is my label. It's like, well, once an artist puts themselves on, they typically go and put somebody else on and show like they know the formula. Um, and that's what I'm doing with my label. I'm showing that this formula isn't a fluke. Watch this other artist and watch me have him do things you never imagined another photographer doing. It's not a fluke and everybody can do it too. For me, I'm a, I'm a true testament of getting out the mud um, because, you know what I mean, where I, where I started in Atlanta, when I got off that plane and moved here, I didn't know a single person in this city.